Okay, please can someone just come up and say yes, I can see your screen. Yes, we can. All right, thank you so much. So like I said earlier, we're going to be covering payment turn, which is your second um, career exercise for week one. So I'm going to basically go through reasons for payment turn and how to be a good mental stroke mentee. So as some of you might be familiar with the traditional mentoring, which is basically um, someone, that's, someone that is in a senior role, being your mentor, or maybe someone just outside your field, just trying to be your guide or role model or some sort. But in terms of peer mentoring, it is usually a relationship between people who are in the same career stage or age. Most times, one person is usually more skilled or knowledgeable than the other and there is usually a transfer of skill and knowledge of some sort. But what also makes this difference from the traditional mentoring is, it works in two ways. So you're a mentor and a mentee at the same time. So say I am Carrie. Carrie is going to be my mentor, I'm going to be a mentee. At the same time, I am Carrie's mentor and she is my mentee. So why are we encouraging peer mentoring? The first thing is, there is going to be room for you to share your experiences. Like some of you are having some issues throughout the training or on the training, you're probably going to be telling your parents or your siblings that, oh, this is what I have. This is the struggle I've been facing and some sort. But they can't really relate to you because they're not really in the field. So having a peer mentor, what kind of gets the issue makes more sense. The person that is going to relate to your struggle. So there's room for you to share your experience. There's room for you to tell people what you're going through and you won't you won't necessarily find that in a in some of your friends per se. Another reason why peer mentoring is encouraged is because it strengthens company culture. I'm sure by now there are some organizations that you have in your head that people have been saying, oh, there's this closeness relationship between the workers. So this kind of strengthens um, the company culture because there is this close bond between the workers there is no some um, there is no form of conflict among them and that way the company can go forward also there is room for you to brainstorm solution it means just the typical things that says you are not an island of knowledge there is someone for you to go to to um deliberate on tax ask oh what is the better way forward how can i bring um how do you think i can solve this problem it's, there, is also room, there is also room for you to track your progress. See it as a way for someone to be in charge of your progress report. So on the long run, you would need someone that will be able to tell you if you've grown in some area. So the person probably tell you, oh, do you know you've grown um, better in at coding or you've grown better at preparing slides or stuff like that. At the same time, you're also able to build your network by now some of you are familiar with the saying that says your network is your net worth so if your partner your peer mentor or peer mentee per se know some of your ability your capability this person is able to recommend you for opportunities and if that person recommends you for opportunities you know more people on the long run that way you're forming some sort of network that this your mentee or mentor has introduced you to all this uh, mentioned would definitely lead to an improved career development if you agree with me. So now, how to be a good mentor? It is quite tricky because you're going to be mentoring your mates per se, in quotes. So it can be hard because you'll be like, oh, there is not so much to gain. But when you look at it on the long run, there is so much to gain. So how to be a good peer mentor? you need to be able to practice active listening in the sense that you are listening to respond, not listening to react. So by now you must have heard that, oh, this person is a great listener or some sort. So as a mentor, peer mentor, 
you're supposed to practice active listening. Try and listen to this person's concerns. Try and listen to this person's struggles and be able to note them, not just listen for reacting, safe, but to actually respond to this person's issue. Also, you have to be accountable in the sense that you're responsible for this person. The same way a parent is responsible for a child, you're kind of responsible for the outcomes of this person on the long run. Also, a good mentor should be able to acknowledge the person's goals and experience. If your mentee comes to you today and say, oh, this is what I have experienced, you shouldn't be able to say things. For example, if the, your mentee says, I'm having a problem with this, you shouldn't say things like, oh, you're not supposed to have a problem with that. It's so cheap. It's so simple. You're supposed to acknowledge it and be like, oh, yes, I understand that this is what you're going through, but this is how we can make it better. Or if someone says, oh, my goal is probably to work at Microsoft or Amazon, something big. If, so, if your mentee has decided to share a very big goal with you, you don't have to belittle it. So you're supposed to acknowledge it and make them know that, oh, this for a fact is very reasonable. It is realistic, but this is how we're going to deal with it. A good mentor should also be able to build trust. As much as you're not expected to share personal, as much as you're not expected to share personal issues, you should um, be also, um, your, ment your mentee should also be able to trust you. Lastly, be non-judgmental. It's almost the same thing as acknowledging the experience. Don't judge your mentee from where they are coming from and just be able to give a logic response to some of their struggles and concerns. So much pressure is always put on the mentor because the mentor is supposed to be the one to give value. But as we have said earlier, this is a peer mentoring which goes both ways. You're also a mentee and a mentor at the same time. It is also important for you to be a good mentee. So how can you match up with your mentor's capabilities? How do you meet your mentor in the middle of the road? You have to be open to sharing. These some of us might be struggling with, even from asking questions. Be understand that this uh, mentor has been assigned to you. This person is your partner, so it's almost like a soulmate thing. This person is your partner. This person is never going to leave you. Except some things can happen, but it will be realistic now. This is your partner. This is almost like your soulmate career-wise. So you should be open to sharing. Just understand that your mentor won't judge you. Your mentor is not going to. Um, shade you or insult you be open to share just see this person as um your open diary so tell them what you're struggling with tell them what you're feeling and they will be ready to help you should also be ready to do follow-ups if your mentor has assigned you to things that would help you if your mentor has assigned you to things that will help you fight these struggles or help you solve your problem you should be able to do follow-up and be like oh i um According to our last discussion, you said I should do this. This is what I have done. This is what I've been able to do so far. And these are the results from the processes so far. You should also be able to accept criticism. Don't see it um, as a form of shade or insult. As much as men the mentor is supposed to give a critical or constructive criticism, don't see it as a big deal. Be ready to just accept it. Be patient too because um, you guys are peers. So don't um, put so much pressure and don't put so much pressure on your mentor being a perfect mentor. So be patient and see things from their perspective too. Also, please provide feedback to your mentor so that way your mentor is able to grow and be a better mentor on the long run. I think I'm still going to keep laying emphasis on it being a peer mentor because you need to understand that you're dealing with your mates. You're not dealing with like an already established person you're dealing with someone who is almost struggling like you, but the person is just better in some aspects than you. And you're also better in some aspects compared to the other person. Think of it as times in university where um, there is this person you go meet for some topics and there are some topics your com um, people would come to you to. So see it that way. It's a form of partnership, but you would understand this person's strengths and weaknesses, complement it, you understand the other person's strengths and weaknesses, and complement it. That being said, I hope Carrie has been able to join. Thank you yeah. for listening. Oh, great. Uh, can you hear me? <clears throat> Thank you for listening. So, for, Carrie is going to 
talk about how to pretty much engage with your mentor treatmenties. If you want to cover questions now, please reach out. Mariam? To yeah? Can you present my slides or share your screen? Um, because sure. I'm having okay. technical difficulties. I shared it right. with you on Slack. All right, I'll get to it now. Thanks. Okay, is that um, good? Yeah, can see it. Um, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I am um, sorry for missing most of it. I'm having technical difficulties. Um, so, yeah, just building on what Mariam said, um, engaging with your mental or mentee, well, just the peer mentoring relationship is not just going to benefit you um you know as a mentor or mentee the skills that you learn during the interview can also help you in other aspects such as preparing you for real job interviews um so yeah let's go on to the first slide mariam um so firstly we should i i'm emphasizing that this is a professional session as much as you've gotten to know your fellow trainees throughout the past two or so weeks um, which is great and I'm sure you've made friends um, for the purposes of this exercise it is a professional meeting so yeah um, you have been paired with one another and that list is available with the google doc where the exercise is on so um you reach out to the person that you're paired with send them a message um private message on slack and then agree on a date so it has to be handed in on the 14th of may so before then um agree on a date and then schedule it in your Google Calendar and then send the link, share the link with each other. Um, you will need to make notes for the purpose of completing the exercise. Um, yeah, I would suggest that you make notes on only the relevant points. Please don't write down anything personal or confidential just read the read through the careers um the peer mentoring exercise carefully make relevant notes because you will need it to complete the assignment um you guys are quite busy i know you've got quite a few activities and stuff and you've got sessions every day career building ses um, community building sessions so I think that in order to keep the peer mentoring session, you know, to limit the time that you spend, it's important to create a timeline or meeting structure um, so that you don't go, you know, into an hour, two hour session, which you can do on your own time if you want to. Um, I would suggest 10 minutes for you to introduce um, yourselves to each other, 10 minutes for asking questions, and then 10 minutes of discussion and conclusion. Um, I also suggest making an agenda before the uh, meeting and then sharing it with one another. Also, once again, it is professional, so please um, do, my, um, do your peer mentor a courtesy of making sure you've got no tech issues, um, which I should have done. I apologize. Um, make sure that you stick to the relevant um, topics and when you are not speaking, use mute. Mariam, can you continue, please? 
Um, beforehand, please prepare relevant questions. I've provided links in this uh, presentation which you can use to follow up on what questions are relevant. Um, always be respectful of the other person's time and experience. Um, we all have different experiences. Our view of the world is very exclusive to us. Um, so not every person is going to experience things the same situation the same way. Um, so if you happen to disagree with your mentor, mentee, just be respectful of that. Um, after, um, during the session, make sure that they are comfortable with you following up and exchanging information and possibly taking the mentor, the peer mentoring relationship further. Make sure that you ask yourself afterwards what you learned um, and how you can apply this new knowledge to your professional life. Um, did you learn something about time management? Did you learn something about how to be professional via a Google Meet session? Did you learn how to do research? Um, make sure that you acknowledge that you learned something after the meeting, it would be really um, polite to send them an email or message just to say thank you. Um, I'm going to emphasize the last point um, very, very um, clearly because this is, I think, very important. Um, you are in a professional relationship with your peer mentor or mentee. Uh, it is not going to be appropriate for anyone to make comments on the other person's appearance. Um, do not compliment them on their appearance. If you do want to compliment them, then do so about their work, their professional work um, that you have observed. Um, it is it's very, very inappropriate for anyone to... Um, just because it will make the other person uncomfortable. Um, also, do not ask anyone questions about their personal life, their religion, their politics, their beliefs, because it's it's just not relevant, firstly. And um, if you have a disagreement with the person, then you will be spoiling your experience at the academy and your experience in the peer mentoring relationship. So I cannot emphasize this last point enough. If you admire someone, that's okay. Um, if you think that they are a cool person, that's okay. If you like how they look, that's okay. But you have to keep it to yourself unless you like their work, you admire their work ethic or whatever it is in a professional environment. Whatever else is just not necessary, it's irrelevant, please keep it to yourself. Mariam, can you please continue? Okay, yeah, links for the um, for more information on this. Um, and yeah, like always, we will share the slides. Um, and then lastly, um, yeah, there are many benefits to this. So practicing this for on a long term basis, taking it forward into your career, whatever job you get into after completing your training. Peer mentoring helps to keep employees engaged. It helps you to transfer knowledge. You um, brainstorm more easily when you are comfortable with one another. Company culture is strengthened and if you have good relationships, good professional relationships with the people around you, then you might actually be happier at work and therefore more productive. So that is it from me. Yeah, we are available for questions and answers now and then on the Slack channel. Thanks. Thank you, Kari. That was very straightforward and beautiful. So please, if you have questions, now is the time. Or if there's anything that was not clear from both of, both of our presentations, please, you can wave then take the floor. Or comment in the chat box.
If it's also clear, you can please put clear in the chat box. However, I think I have a couple of questions just to be sure we are on the same page with the assignment or exercise per se. Does the link in the click here work? It requires privilege. I'm not sure I understand that. Yeah, okay. Are you seeing um the link that contains the pairing? Because we've paired everyone. So obviously you you know your mentee by now, you know your mentor. Are you saying it works as um does everyone have access to it? Um do you mean do you need access to do you need um us to share access with the doc with you for the document? I'm not quite sure what they mean. Does everyone have access to it? I'm sure they should. Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, sir. Can you? Uh, I was uh, looking on the document and I tried to check uh, with uh, my peer, my colleague peer. Mm -hmm. So when I, uh, it says uh, the list can be found in here. Uh, so when I click here, uh, I see the link, but it doesn't. Uh, connect to my peer or to show me uh, uh, my peer. So is your name on, not on the list? No, uh, the document by default didn't open. Okay, we will then, um, I'll put that in the Slack, in our Slack and we will um, correct that and then share the corrected link with you. Um, sorry about that. Okay, someone already shared the link again. You could please try again, but okay, I'm let sure. me let me check this one. All right, many thanks. Okay. okay. So I just want to know in a situation where your mentee doesn't um show up for your meeting, what would you do? I'd love to hear a couple of responses. Did you please go ahead? Yeah, thanks. Uh, and again, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, I think this this is a really helpful uh, peer mentoring. And uh, in case my 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 mentor didn't show up, I think I would uh, maybe write to to him or her on Slack or. Me, uh, yeah, I, I would use, use Slack because I think uh, most of the time, since Slack is kind of professional, uh, professional of communication, so I think I would use Slack or other times when we have to maybe work together on something, use like Google Meet. Yeah, but in that case, I would use uh, Slack to communicate to him or her. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. So it's quite important that if your peer, uh, your peer mentor mentor doesn't show up, it's you you're responsible to to also like reach out because you're accountable for your partner. So you have to like reach out and ask, oh, what's up? Why didn't you show up? And stuff like that. Thank you, Rafa. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Maryam. So Hi. for some reason, I just couldn't make up uh, to come in in the time, and now I will surely. Uh, return to the recording. But for now, maybe if it's possible that you just sum up for me what was uh, that because. Uh, okay, that's my problem. But Kari, do you want to say something? Because I could, I noticed you unmute your mic. Um, no, I'm okay. Um, no, 
don't think there's anything um just the person who spoke before Rafa um just to let you know that if they don't respond to you then the responsibility transfers from you to them because they also need to it's a two-way thing so your your exercises cannot be marked either of your exercises cannot be marked if they don't respond um but yeah nothing else all right thank you Kurt. so as rafa requested um from my end what i pretty much talked about is peer mentoring as a whole and how to be a good mentor stroke mentee so what we've said so far is unlike the traditional mentoring which many of us are familiar with that has to do with a more established person or a senior colleague who is basically just guiding us to the right path and showing us the ropes and the career but compared to peer mentoring you have someone who is almost equally struggling as you or maybe i shouldn't use the word struggling but someone who is considered your mate or someone who is considered to be in the same career stage as you are so you have this person as your mentee and this person is also your mentor so let's say i am rafa i am your mentor you're my mentee you're also my mentor i am your mentee so that's how peer mentoring works it goes um both ways and you're both responsible for each other then we went over um some qualities of a good mentor and mentee and we said um a good mentor should practice active listening a good mentor should be ready to listen to um, his or mentee. A good mentor should be accountable for their mentee in the sense that you're responsible for the outcomes of this person. You should be ready to acknowledge and share experiences. So if your mentee says, oh, this is what I'm going through, you should be able to acknowledge that, oh, this is true, this is realistic, but you shouldn't throw them under the bus and say things like, oh, uh, but that, that is not a problem you should deal with that on your own or if, you, if they share their goals with you you shouldn't say things like oh this your goal is too big i don't think it's i see it happening or if they say if they share something really small to you you don't have to say oh strike for something bigger you need to just be on the same page with your mentee and just try and make sure um you don't make them feel so little at the end of the day then we said as much as so much pressure is um, placed on the mentor it is also important for you to be a great um it's also important for you to be a great mentee as well so you should be able to give feedback do follow-ups be patient with your mentor especially how this is a form of peer mentoring your mentor is also probably having issues like you so you're not supposed to put so much pressure on your mentor you should be patient with your mentor so and i think by the time you go through the slides so you see a couple of things that i've also mentioned um Rafa, is that okay before Kari goes ahead? All right. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if anyone has any question yet. So I remember, um, okay. If you are um, confused about where to find the exercise, it's always in Google Classroom and we are going to share the links to the slides just now in Slack after the session has ended. So you'll have access to it right away. So I remember Carrie putting so much emphasis on trying to make sure the mentoring is on a perfect, not perfect, but like it's on a professional level like there isn't supposed to be so much of um personal issues or comments on appearances or um, who they are as a person so how do you dodge or how do you um, move away from questions if for example maybe the person they attend this um tutorial per se and then your mentor mentee is asking you a very personal question how would you approach that how would you shy away from that i would love to yeah, one or two. Carrie, you could also give advice on that too. Um, thanks. I think that if you are stuck in a situation where you are being asked uncomfortable and inappropriate questions, the best thing to do is to step away um, 
to the other person that you're feeling uncomfortable and then leave the meeting thus the that kind of behavior is against the 10 academy's code of conduct so they and we've made it clear several times in this meeting and you will get the information in the slides that it's unacceptable behavior thank you car Alam, go ahead. You mean Gazan? So, yes, go ahead, please. Uh, when uh, we, uh, before we reach uh, our colleagues, uh, we try to find some uh, information from their uh, different social medias. And uh, from the Slack, there are some people who didn't have. Uh, uh, picture photo for uh, of them so uh, there may be uh, the same name as they have in social medias how do we uh, clarify it uh, is there a must to communicate them before or not oh just to be sure i get what you're saying are you saying um towards the search for looking for their um professional their social media you couldn't yes. get like their full name. Yes. Okay, but you already know your partner already now. Uh, for example, I know my partner okay. and I try to reach him in uh, uh, LinkedIn, for example. When I type uh, his name, I got a lot of people's. When okay, I to, you try to compare just... it with... But you know the person on Slack by now. Yes. Okay, uh, you can just message the Slack information Slack. is uh, not complete. I didn't that's what I'm saying. Uh, get the you can picture. reach out to the person on Slack via DM, normal message, uh, okay. and say, Oh, okay. I've been here with you. Please, can you share with yeah, me okay. your social network details? Okay, okay. Does that you. work? That's okay. I'm sure the person should also have like reached out to you too, if the person has seen that you guys appeared. Yes. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Oh, sorry, um, Carrie is having some connection issues, so she's just coming in and coming out. I don't even know what to say again. <laughs> so, any other question, please? Oh, yeah, um, Tadis, uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I and Carrie will share our slides the moment we end this session. You're welcome. I don't know if everyone kind of grabs like the idea of this payment term because on the long run, when you um, get these global level jobs, we want um, you to be able to use the knowledge from this payment term to form like stable relationships with your partner, with your partners at work. So this will kind of give you like an insight, an overview of how to from like stable relationship with your coworkers. So from this payment story, you're going to meet um, colleagues who are going to be at the same entry level jobs as you are. So you will be able to, cause you're not going to figure everything out at once. So you're going to meet these people too. And you're going to be able to like, you're going to be able to share experiences, learn from them. They will learn from you too. And that way you build, you're building a beautiful network at work. If that makes sense. Well, why? But while you're while you're solving your exercise or writing your report, um, if you come across any issues, please do not hesitate to reach out to mm -hmm. us on the um all career exercise channel on Slack. Just to reaffirm, we're expecting a Google Doc. A report um, documenting your your meeting with your mentee stroke mentor, following um, the instructions in the Google Doc assignment. Once again, Carrie apologized. She can't get in at this point again. 
So if we don't have any other question, I guess we can call it a day. Okay, Didier, please go ahead. Yeah, can you shed more light on uh, what you have to do for this exercise? About peer mentoring, like what, what you have to do? What have to have, you, have you um, gone through your career folder? Have you seen the um, exercise instruction? Oh, not yet. Oh, there is uh, the same way you have like the instruction for the um, global, uh, real world jobs. There is an instruction, a Google Doc to saying everything we want. Everything you expected to do rather in a Google Doc. So I think you should go through your career exercise folder. That's the second exercise for week one. Okay, I'll check that. All right. So it basically has all the instruction how you should schedule a um, meeting with your mentee. By now, you should have seen who you appeared with because the link is on that Google Doc itself. So you would schedule a meeting with your mentee stroke mentor and then have a conversation. You must have prepared questions down and you're pretty much going to write a report on your meeting. So your findings, what you've realized, what you think you can do better. Thales, please go ahead. Okay, Mariam, good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, could I ask uh, some confusion? Uh, the thing is that confused me on sure, technical. Okay. Uh, for the job exercise, uh, it says just uh, use uh, data engineering uh, for this exercise and uh, it listed some of the things that should be provided here for example uh, in my scenario if i went to link uh, if i search one job and uh, if i identify the things uh, such as a company the position the physical location and so on things and uh, <clears throat> could I write it what they have posted uh, about the detail of the job and uh, should I analyze do I have a knowledge to do this job and uh, what gap I have and so on things or uh, are uh, do I going to uh, apply for it just on the on that platform or it is a reporting okay first things first you're not applying for any job yet okay i think i should just put that out you're not applying for these jobs yet this exercise is pretty much preparing you to note the kind of jobs you will be applying for by july 31st and that will be at the end of your three months technical training. I'm sure by now you understand that the whole academy, the training is for six months, three months is for technical training, then three months is a job search supported phase where we're going to assist you in getting this job. So first things first, you're not applying for these jobs yet, but in the same time, we were asking you to check out this job and that is to see if you are already acquiring skills and knowledge that are required by these um, jobs. So for your very first question, which says, are you supposed to write out all the description? Not necessarily. You can summarize the job description. I remember you're just going to add the link to the um, job site. I remember you're not doing like a Google listing. You're going to give us the link to the, say you apply to Microsoft. You're not going to give us Google um, link or something. You're going to give us the link to the exact Microsoft um, website showing the job vacancy. Then for your gap analysis, what you're pretty much supposed to do is to analyze if there is a gap between the skills you have and the skills these um, jobs are requiring. Have I answered all of your questions? Yes, exactly. Uh, right. Could I add one? one? Sure, sure. Uh, for example, when you see on Angel List and uh, LinkedIn, yeah, and uh, and as uh, indeed, and also the rest of the job search platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, they don't brief the deadline of submission. Just what they put is 
we are actively recreating, for example, when you check the status of the job on the LinkedIn, for example, from my experience. And uh, when you uh, proceed to have uh, uh, to when you proceed to the link of the organization, even the deadline of that job is not specified. So in that in that case, how do we uh, write the closing date for applications? Maybe uh, mm, if they're actively recruiting, you can easily just put that there as the closing date in brackets. I'm like they're actively recruiting. But at the same time, oh. anything there isn't because even on LinkedIn, there are some um what would I put it now? Oh there's some okay. accounts that put out jobs that are not really certified. And I remember Carrie talking about it that you should stay away from like employment scams and stuff. As much as you're not actively applying to these things, anything that isn't exactly clear, I think you should just stay away from it. So just avoid doubt. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. I think we have a couple of minutes before we end the section. Once again, sorry, Carrie isn't able to stay with us. She has connection issues. It was me yesterday, now it's out today. <laughs> Crazy world. So we're going to send um, the links to the slides on, on Slack, the All Career Exercise channel. Once again, please, any question you have, please send it to any question that's related to the career exercise tutorials and all of that, please send to the All Careers Exercise um, channel on Slack. Can I get... Um, Claire or okay in the comments um, in the chat box, just so I know we kind of have an idea of everything we've been seeing since the beginning of the tutorial. All right, Mark, Alem, thank you. Once again, all the instructions you need to carry out this um, exercise perfectly is on the Google Doc. Um, what's it called again? It's to be in your career folder and all the instructions are there. Please abide to the instructions. Take your time, go through them. Look for this, um, this um, what am I saying again? Meet up with your mentor, your mentor. Have a wonderful meeting, report it beautifully, check for spellings, check for errors, and look forward to seeing your reports, grading them. Any other questions? Okay. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your day and I wish you the very best. Take care.